Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review today. We're going to take a, we're going back to the island of Aaron, or Isle, and take a look at this 21 year old 46% ABV from the distillery. Dustin, you were able to pick up this bottle. Beautiful 21 year old, natural color and unchill filtered. Tricky to get out of here, not really. This is a little bit better than some of the uh, boxes, the fancy boxes that we've seen lately. But another nice, beautiful, clear glass bottle for a lovely whiskey. And again, they said this is 46% unchill filter, natural color. What can you tell us about it? Honestly, Mike, I did a little research. I could not find the cast maturation. My guess is it's mostly bourbon and probably has a little bit of sherry. Look at the color. You, it's natural color. It's unchill filtered. A little dark. So my guess is there's some sherry cast in here for sure. And I think we'll get through there, the notes and tasting. Uh, these run about 160, 170. Not bad. For so we're talking 21 year old for really reasonable price. Now that is buying it from the UK. Uh, I've not seen these in the states yet. Uh, don't know when we'll get them uh, in. Well, I mean, we know we're not getting them in Ohio. No. Yeah, this is just not, not something so obscure. And again, this is kind of our our initial journey down uh, this yep. distillery. Uh, we just recently did a comparison of the first and second, or the most two most recent versions of the 18 year old. Now we're taking a look at this 21 year old, and uh, you know, a very affordable whiskey, especially for the age statement yep. you get. Being the fact that it's natural color, unchill filtered, 46 percent ABV, checking a lot of boxes. Absolutely, Mike. And a beautiful color. Yeah. At that beautiful, nice light caramel color here. Yeah, this just looks like a nice, well aged Scotch. Mm, I tell you what, on the nose, it jumps off the glass on you. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting like a grape candy, like right off the bat. I know it's something. I know when I dig in there, I'm mm -hmm. gonna separate it and peel it back. Mm -hmm. But initially, that first note is like, wow, that's great. No, there's more there. Oh, man, I tell you what, again, for 46 percent EV, it really jumps off the glass. If I didn't know it was 46, I would I would expect 48, 50 percent even. Like it really has a very, yeah. very strong, punchy smell to it, and I'm getting both. Bourbon and cherry cast flavors, you know, right yeah. off, right, off, right off the bat. And now I'm getting, oh, I'm getting oak, which is telling me, okay, this is a twenty. This tells me, okay, I am smelling twenty-one year old whiskey. This is not a whiskey they found a way to cheapen to get twenty-one years out. Of it. Mm -hmm. This smells like well aged, good cast, yes, and good whiskey. Okay, but yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting, getting a lot of good things. I'm getting vanilla, vanilla sweetness, mm -hmm. maybe a twinge of honey. Honey sweetness as well, but then kind of that sherry, those traditional sherry notes kind of start coming up. And again, I don't know if this is sherry or not, but it certainly smells like it. You know, I'm getting like a really nice baked white bread. Yeah, there is baked goods and baked spices in here in general. Yeah, now there's some spice too, but yeah. A little bit of cinnamon maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Mmm. I mean, it's really got a lot going yeah, on in this. There's not a lot of like pieces I pick out of this that I go, oh, that's distinctly this or that's distinctly that. It's just... It's a lot of quality I look for in a lightly sherried older whiskey. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of generic, lightly sherried older whiskey, but in a really nice way. I'm not getting the maritime notes, Mike. And, At all. Yeah, I'm yeah. not really getting a lot of salt and everything kind of, we kind of did on one of those, uh, the older version of the 18. It was yeah. very, had a, a very, like the salt note almost kind of came off like an old Pulteney 17, sort of, sort of like. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting none of that on this, which makes me think the sherry influence is a little bit stronger in this than it was the older version of the 18. Yeah, and what's surprising to me on this one is, remember, they're saying this was aged at the distillery, this, these casks were at least, so mm -hmm. it should be getting that maritime note. Yeah, so um, in our research of Aaron, they said sometimes they're aged on the island, sometimes they're aged on the mainland. On the box of this Aaron 21, it specifically says both distilled and aged on the Isle of Aaron. Isle, I believe is how you say it, correct? Mm -hmm. I think before I said island. I've been corrected on that before. Forgive me. I'm, I've never been to Scotland. So I think I it is an before. island, so I think you're technically right. It is an island, but I think they call it an yeah. island. I'm not sure. But I'm sure you guys will be kind enough to tell me in a constructive fashion in, in the comment section. Just trash them. <laughs> I'm an American, sorry, I'm doing my best. All right, what are you, what are you picking up on the ballot? Um, comes off nice sweetness, obvious sherry influence right away. Mm -hmm. um, definitely pick up some of that oak. But then I'm getting a fruit on the back end, Mike, that, I mean, it's getting into like sort of a, maybe a grapefruit or it's something that's a little bitter, a little sour, really nice. And it got some acidity to it. And it complements the oak beautifully. Yeah, that, that is. That's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's an orange or a mango, but you're right. Like maybe like a grapefruit with sugar on it or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Like it's acidic, but it doesn't quite go orange or mango to me. Yeah, well, somewhere in between. It's almost like a very. It's a bit of tartness to it. Yep. Just, just a slight bit. It's almost kind of like a, like a tart peach or no, uh, I would say more like a tart um, pear. Yeah. 
It's, I think that's coming from bourbon cast. Probably that have been reused a couple times. I get that note on a lot of like refilled mm. ex bourbons. Um, and it's a it's very favorable. It's actually one of the things I look for most when I drink an ex bourbon um, cask. It's almost coming off as a slight bit of pineapple too. I 100. percent Yeah, just like you know, like almost like in a hairy buffalo <laughs> or something like. No, that. No, I was literally try thinking there was something else I'm missing. Yeah, it starts pineapple, and then it kind of goes grapefruit. Mm -hmm. I mean, but nice. I wouldn't call them tropical fruits, but I would call them like the softer, you know, South Florida type fruits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we put a little bit of water in it. Actually, the water changed it quite a bit. Now the maritime notes are here. Absolutely. I was just yeah, getting ready to say, I was like, they weren't there before, no, but I'm now like, they're here. Oh, sea salt, there it is. Yeah, there it is. That's obvious. It, it's shocking how, how salty this yeah. got. Now I'm thinking more like a multi grain bread. <sighs> kind of is, earthy, heavy. There is like a wheat characteristic to it yeah. almost. Something you'd find in a field somewhere. Yeah. Four, gain, four, four grain wheat bread with like a. Oat dusting covered, yeah, like you yeah. know, like oats are kind of dusted on the top of yeah. it or something like that. Maybe you're in the barn; they just brought in like the wheat and it's dried. And salt and butter. It's oh, almost like it's almost like you 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 toasted that bread, and then just put a slight bit of butter on it and just like sprinkled some salt yeah, on it. There's just a hint of uh, the sherry now in the very end of the nose. Yeah, wow, water changes quite a bit. Yeah, I mean it completely. Up front, it was all sherry the first time through, and mm -hmm. then it kind of you started digging into the other stuff. That grape note I mentioned, gone. Gone. Fruit's gone. Yeah, there's just a little bit, maybe like a hint of a raisin at the very end, but I mean it's very light. But maybe a leathery note, but now it's just grains mm -hmm. and salt. Like it, yeah. it changed quite a bit. And again, this is well, this is the neck board. I mean, you've had this open for yeah. a few weeks now, haven't you? I think it's a month plus now, actually. Yeah, that's shocking how much the water changed it. Yeah. Now, actually, with now a little bit, I can start to pick up some of those sweetness, but man, it is a distinct difference. Almost two different whiskeys. Let me pick it over the palate with a little bit. So, unfortunately, this killed the palate for me. It did bring out more of the salt, brought out more of like the maritime, but it's thinned out the whiskey too much. Um, it still finishes really nicely, but it finished better meat, and it definitely, it just, it, it tastes watered down. 46% is a, it's a, a weird ABV you can overdo it quick. Yeah. But I tell you what, there is more, there is a salty note on it initially. But when you swallow, those fruits come back. Mm -hmm. And before you said, like on the on the nose, there's like almost like a leathery um, raisin on it. It comes back into something sherry. Maybe more of a figure a fig or a date mm -hmm. rather than a raisin. But I'm right there with you. Yeah. That fruit, it's basically salty maritime and just a little bit of sweetness right yeah. there in the finish, which I like. The finish changed, but the finish remained pretty strong and pretty effective. Unfortunately, the upfront sweetness kind of got... It got hit pretty hard well, there. Well, you'd expect that over how much how much saltier it smelled with the water. Yeah. And, and it kind of, the nose followed the palate in both scenarios, yep. both neat and with water. What you were smelling on the nose, you got a similar flavor profile on the palate. But the finish is kind of consistent. A little yeah. more consistent than I, I would assume it would be based yep. on the nose and the palate. Absolutely. Give it a little more little taste here before we go up the score. Yeah, I mean, again, this is another scenario where I would prefer it neat. But mm -hmm. it's always fun to try it both ways. Mm -hmm. Now, cons considering this style of malt almost tastes a little bit better, desserty, where the sherry comes out a little bit more, I would mm -hmm. keep it that way. But I got to tell you, I'm impressed with a whiskey that can change that much with water. That just means there's more to dig into. In yeah. My well, and you know, I think what we're all picking up here and I'm liking is, I think Aaron has kept from oversharing their whiskeys, even the 18, which is now you know a super sherry whiskey. Well, and still keeping some of that distillery characteristic, which I think, again, is why people keep talking about Aaron, because I've been hearing a lot of people talk about this distillery for a couple years now. And I, it's got to be that people like this maritime, sweet, balanced, but yet kind of meaty malt. Yeah, I mean, again, this is, yeah, I mean, I'm not getting a ton of meat in this particular one, but I, I understand what you're saying with that. And also, it's an extremely affordable whiskey that does a lot of things right again. From ABV to unchill filter to natural color, yep. this is definitely a buy. I agree. For what you I agree. For it, without question. Um, where is where's whiskey scoring this one? So that's where I'm, I'm really struggling here between an 86 and an 87. Mike, I think I'm going to go 80. I think I'm going 86, and that's a that's still a firm quality score. And I think that's mm -hmm. right in line with about that 160 price point. I'm going slightly higher. I'm going to go 87 on this one okay. from you. Um, I really I enjoyed it better. Um, neat. Without yeah, question, it absolutely. was a very sweet, very nice whiskey. Um, you get a good texture, good mm -hmm. ABV, um, and it really jumped. As far as I know, it was jumping out of the Glen Cairn. Yeah. Now, if you could find this on the shelf, is there any other twenty-one-year-old that you can actually buy that you would even consider over this one for the price? 
let's say let's gently look at price. Tweet, tweet, tweet the score. I mean, there's going to be nothing that you're not going to pay almost twice as much for. Yeah, I mean, until until you get to Springbank 21, I sure. can't tell you a 21 year old whiskey right now on the market I like better than this. It's an under. It's an under. Um, it's not a great age range, honestly. Right, it, it, it's an under, you don't have a lot of whiskeys in, in the 21 year age range. And a lot of them, it's like the Glen Going 20, I'm not a huge fan of, but I'd prefer that over Glen Going 21 in my opinion. It's just, there's more going on here. Absolutely. And again, it smells on the nose neat, higher than 46% ABV. Yep. It really comes roaring it's really out rich, it's really enjoyable. Now the nose is getting close to an 88. The nose is my favorite part of this whiskey. Yeah. If it could hold water a little better, that's what would have gotten me in that 87, 88 range. It just, it doesn't, and that's kind of why I went 86. You know, as much as it changed with water, mm -hmm. I think it, that, was, that was the plan. You know what I mean? Could Where, be. you know, this, again, this is almost like two different whiskeys yeah. when you put the water into it. The, the, the change from one to another was startling. Yeah, but Balvenie 21 year? No, I'm getting this. Yeah, I agree. The Macallan Fine Oak 21? Nope. Getting this. Yeah, at, at a third of the cost. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I have to look at price on that one. It's just better whiskey. So No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, no, so, I I, you know, this is really doing a lot of good stuff here. It's coming in at a great price. Try this whiskey. Yeah. I mean, this this is well worth a buy. Yeah, anything over an 84 for us is going to be something to pick up if the price is right. Yeah, and this price is absolutely, absolutely right. right. Yep. And again, the, the presentation, they're showing, they're showcasing the whiskey. Um, nice box, but not crazy. You yeah, know well, I mean? you know, if I was going to drop a bottle that was in a box... I think that box protects it more than a lot of boxes I have. So it's a solid, it's yeah. solid packaging. It's all packaging. Anyway, that's where right. Justin's in eighty six. I'm in eighty seven. Definitely both recommend this whiskey for the price if you can get your hands on it. Yep. Not the easiest whiskey to get your hands on, but if you can, check it out. Let us know what you guys think. Tell us in the comment section. Dustin, until next time, what do you wish, folks? Happy drinking. See you then.